Hi, my name is Daniel from scooter.guide. Make sure you visit our website at scooter.guide, that's the domain. Uh, and make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube and follow us on social media. So today, I have probably the best electric scooter I've ever reviewed. So I've had lots of electric scooters over the last couple of years. I've reviewed hundreds of scooters and I have to say what Bronco have made here is just unfathomable. I mean, easily, hands down, the best electric scooter of 2021 and it will probably hold that title for quite some time. So why is the Bronco so amazing for an electric scooter? Well, let's start with the power. So it's 8,400 watts peak. Uh, that means 4,100 watts peak per motor. Um, no, 8,200 watts, sorry, per motor. Forgive my maths today. And it has a 72 volt, 35 amp hour, 35 amp hour LG MJ1 1850 cells with high discharge rate. So this thing immediately, spec wise, is a beast. Now, whilst the Weeped FF, which is 12,000 watts, has quite a bit of an additional power on top of this, I would argue that this actually is the quicker scooter. So the Weeped FF will probably have a bit more acceleration than the Bronco, not a lot, but this has top end. It has much better range, it's far comfier to ride, and I have to say, I mean, this is my own personal one, so I've, you know, I've paid for this, and I've done over a thousand miles on this since I got it, and every single time I take it out, it's an absolute joy to ride, absolute joy. So why is this scooter so amazing? Well, they've got the perfect balance of power, range and comfort. So this is incredibly comfortable to ride. You've got air shock suspension at the rear, you've got uh, spring suspension at the front, both are customizable, and everything has been built and done proportionately. So, you know, you've got the right length depth, you've got the right length wheelbase, um, you know, the ride height is perfect, and the suspension settings on this thing just make it so much easier to customize whether you want a softer ride, harder ride, wherever you're gonna use it. So it has absolutely bucket of buckets of power. Now, the rated speed, top speed of one of these is 70 miles per hour. Now, it can be hit and miss. Um, I haven't managed to get 70 miles per hour, but I've managed to get near. So I've done 67 miles per hour downhill on Strava on a flat, 64 miles per hour so although it's a few miles per hour off the acclaimed top speed it's still incredibly uh, amazing you know for a scooter to be able to do that um, now the thing that really set the bronco apart from the box when i got it was the fact that it came with a steering damper and it didn't come with a cheap steering damper it came with a very nice brushed aluminium style steering damper which is very good quality uh, from the box you bolt it on and you know it helps to prevent death wobble obviously when you're going 50 miles per hour plus on any scooter you have to have a steering damper unless obviously you like death wobble which no one does so the quality of the bronco the bronco uh bronco motors are the company that manufacture it um a lot of people haven't heard of them um you know they're only a small scale manufacturer but what they manufacture uh, it's like the Aston Martin of scooters. It's hand built, um, it's all very high quality. All the materials used to make this thing are high quality, and that results in a scooter that is robust. And it should be. We're talking about £3,500, uh, over $4,000 to buy one of these. But I can tell you now, um, even though I was reluctant initially to spend that much on a scooter when I brought it and it arrived and I actually took it out. I didn't care about the money anymore, it was completely worth it. Now I've done a thousand miles on it, absolutely trouble free, not had a single problem. The fact is, is that it's just performed well every single time. It's done obviously a few charge cycles now and I've got no battery deterioration, absolutely fantastic. So the scooter itself looks quite similar to a Dualtron Thunder. It is bigger and it is heavier and it's far better built in terms of things like the double stem clamp here. Again, I think what Bronco have done is they took 
the the base of the funder and they've just adapted on that but they have really really put attention to detail in every little part so the double stem clamp is really good because it's absolutely you know rock solid although however the one thing i would say is there was a tiny tiny bit of play in the stem they use skf steering head bearings and i think the first initial models were probably 0.1 of a millimeter oversized so some riders could feel a tiny bit of play um, but i know that they've addressed that now um, so you know uh, it's absolutely solid and the double clamp really does work well um, it's similar to the 011X in the, in, uh, the two handle part of the clamp, so you just unwind it, slide, slide the um, clamp up and then obviously that allows the steering stem tube to come down. So in terms of things like charging, yes it takes a long time. So we've got 35 amp hour battery at 72 volts and well over 2000 watt hour of total storage in here. Now, the range on this thing is absolutely incredible when you ride it conservatively. I've been able to get more than 50 miles on a single charge, 50 miles. Now, when we see a lot of electric scooters like the Dualtron X and um, you know, the Dualtron Ultra 2, um, a lot of the ranges claimed by manufacturers are generally way off, way off. So a lot of them, you know, you could take 50% off of a lot of scooters. Um, with the Bronco, uh, the advertised range varies depending on where you look. Um, I think on average they quote between 70 to 90 miles. Um, you, you won't do that unless you're in single motor mode, eco mode, doing 10 miles per hour, in which case it will take you a whole day uh, you know, of riding to, you know, to get that sort of mileage. But real world range for someone that likes speed is generally around 30 to 40 miles, which you know, it's still fantastic, but um, even in mode three, dual mode, um, not, not in eco mode, I've been able to get 50 miles driving sort of fairly conservatively, but still doing an average of 30 to 35 miles per hour. So you will not have range anxiety on this thing at all. It does support fast charging. The standard charger is 1.75 amps, 84 volts. So it does slow charge. It does have two GX16 ports, so you can use two chargers at a time to speed up the whole charging process, but you're looking at around 19 hours from flat on the standard charger that comes with it. So in terms of the grade uh, that this thing can climb, in terms of hills, um, we're looking at 70% or 35 degrees plus, but to be honest, this thing is an absolute monster, so it wouldn't surprise me if it could get up inclines you know, as high as 50 degrees plus. Um, it will take any weight rider, whether you weigh 100 kilos, 150 kilos, it will take you and it will not struggle whatsoever because the sheer amount of power. We've got the standard setup where we have 160 mil rotors with nut hydraulic brakes. They work absolutely fantastically. Um, Scoot is super responsive when braking, so that's fantastic. In terms of the stand, the stand again is well positioned on this. Um, still on the thin side for this kind of weight of scooter, but it does an adequate job on flat ground and they, they put a square rubber pad at the bottom to spread the weight so it is more stable when it's on the stand. So in terms of using the scooter, so there is an IP54 rating on the scooter, so you can use it in light drizzle, damp conditions, probably wouldn't want to, but you can do that. In terms of the actual suspension itself, when you're riding the scooter, if you have it on a hard setup, it feels extremely sporty, very agile, you can easily take corners, bumps, whatever, it will not struggle at all. If you have it on a softer setting, it will still hoover up the roads, um, you know, and, and it's very comfortable, very comfortable. And I think the other thing that is really good with the Bronco, you've got a nice big foot plate back here, so you can get a really good stance, and the actual stem itself is a good height, so even taller riders aren't going to have a problem with the Bronco whatsoever. Having the ability to put your foot at a slanted angle at the back of the scooter is really good. And, you know, you're not going to get your footing in the wrong position on this. Not like on the Dualtron X where you've got the two foot plates at the rear and sometimes people accidentally catch the suspension. Not going to happen on this. So in terms of things like the mud guards, the mud guards are really good. They, they arch over the wheels quite a lot, so they, um, they stop a lot of dust, dirt, uh, any damp or water flicking up over the scooter, which is really good. And 
when you just look at the construction of this thing, the frame, the frame is all uh, hot forged. So it's not cast, it's hot forged. Now that is really important because what that means is, is that it means that the frame and all the components are less likely to southern fractures because it's hot forged and it's all done as a single unit, obviously with bolt on elements. It just makes the skewer even better in terms of quality, robustness and reliability. Now you can really tell the attention to detail on this because even basic things, so a lot of the electric scooters will typically have plastic, the hard plastic uh, spiral coating around the wires. But what they've done on the Bronco is they've used a very nice braided material. And just that, I know it seems like really trivial, but on a lot of the electric scooters like the Wii Ped um, and, and, you know, and some of the Jultrons, having that hard plastic um, wire protection, number one, it doesn't look that great. And number two, it tends to make that horrible cracking noise when you're folding it up. The Bronco is all soft, really soft fabric style uh, sheathing around the cables and they've rooted it through down into the frame and down under so you don't have to worry about anything catching this stuff again they've done it really well now the one thing that you can tell and the one thing that Bronco really wanted everyone to know was that it's a Bronco every part of this thing has Bronco written on it whether it's the foot plate whether it's the steering head the deck the motors the mud guards absolutely every part of this is plastered in uh, in Bronco the rear gas suspension comes with a pump, so out of the box, when you get the screw out of the box, you have a pump, and you can use that pump to basically uh, shock, shock pump, so that you can put more air into the system, and you can better customise your suspension settings. Now I'm just going to move this back. Obviously it's precariously positioned on an Ikea desk. Um, the screw isn't light. So looking at the overall scooter weight itself, it's at 46 kilos. In American weight, that's 102 pounds. So it is a heavy scooter. Um, not overly portable, but it can fold down. It does lock. It's very innovative in terms of using the rear foot plate uh, and a little hook at the top of the stem um, to, you know, to fold it down and lock it. So what I'm going to do now So the clamp works on both sides. You just release the bolts, slide the clamp up, and then the scooter folds down. And then what we have here is a little hook. You push it, position that into there. That now means that you can carry the scooter. So the Bronco, is absolutely feature rich. The one thing that does let the Bronco down, and it lets a lot of the electric scooters down, is the LCD panel, the voltage panel. Now, Bronco have taken the standard, um, I forget the model number of the panel, but it's the one that you get on a lot of the scooters, you know, like the Zero 10X, the 11X, you know, it's the round uh, Red Star, but what Bronco have done is they've basically put their branding on it. Um, unfortunately, it's not great, so, for example, you would never trust the battery indicator. You do not trust the battery indicator. Um, but you get, you get the standard buttons. And the one thing that you do get, and you can see that in the photos on the review, is the uh, light button to switch the lights on and off. Um, is, a, is a lovely chrome style button that's um, partially illuminated at the back. Um, you get the, the buttons for single motor and dual motor mode, sport and eco mode. And then obviously you have the modes on the LCD panel itself. As you can probably tell, this is my own personal one. So I've added a carry bag on here and I've added additional lighting. Now let's talk about the lighting on the scooter. So, exactly like the Jultron Thunder, you have integrated deck lights. They project the beam across the floor. However, not very good at night. So if you are planning to use this at night, you're better off getting um, a handlebar extension and then on that extension you can put a torch, you can put something that projects a beam a lot further. Um, I mean the lights are very bright, the front and rear LED lights are extremely bright, but they're not very suitable for illuminating the road in the dark. So you're definitely going to want to put your own aftermarket um, lighting on it. In terms of overall portability, like 
most electric scooters, like the Wii Ped, it actually shares the same handlebar mechanism as the Wii Ped, where you can press the button, flick the catch open, and fold it. Now, you can get this in a lot of cars, although it is big. Um, you know, I regularly use it, uh, but if you're putting it in like a day-to-day -day family car, you'll have to fold the seats down. And again, it's heavy, so generally two of you will be required to lift it. So, in terms of problems with the Bronco, to be honest, um, there's not really any reported problems in the wild. Um, you know, from a lot of the scooter groups that I'm involved with, where a lot of people have Broncos, um, the only thing that some people have commented on is the steering head bearing thing, which again is resolved. But other than that, um, there isn't really a lot to complain about. Again, this really does boil down to price and quality. With the Bronco, they've put a lot of R&D into developing it and, and you know even things like the controller so they use <coughs> uses 200 amp Gemini controller pure sine wave again you know just the higher quality components that they use the controller on this is absolutely phenomenal it allows such good power regulation between the motors and again you know they haven't had to resort to uh, fan induction cooling like they have on the Weeped there's a heat sink and protector at the bottom. That tends to dissipate heat. The Bronco does a really good job at dissipating heat under the bottom of the deck. So if you do ride on a warm day and you are riding vigorously, you'll feel the deck does get hot, so it does dissipate heat um, very well. I've had no problems with overheating. I've had no problems with controllers. I've had literally zero problems with it. It's been an absolutely fantastic scooter. I mean, you know, there's other things as well. So. Even on the wheels, what they've done, what they've done with the valves is they've made the valves longer and easier to get to. So the problem is with small wheels like this is that the valves tend to be buried away in the wheels. If you get a puncture, it's very hard to get um, an adapter onto the valve. So they've put that out. They put some nice dust caps on it. I feel like I'm 15 talking about dust caps. But all the little bits of attention to detail show that with the Bronco, they really did want to stand out and make a scooter. So I have to say, for 2020 and 2021, the Bronco 11 Extreme is hands down one of the best scooters. It's one of the fastest, it's agile, it's fantastic to ride, it's reliable, robust, it looks great. And honestly, I can say, if you have the money spare, definitely worth the investment. You'll get thousands of miles of trouble-free riding out of these. Um, and I know from experience, because I'm racking up the mileage on this using it, I'm commuting 20, 30 miles a day using it, and it, you know, it never lets me down. Really pleased with it. If you do have any questions, feel free to get in contact with us, subscribe to our YouTube channel, check us out on social media, or visit our website at justscooter.guide. Uh, we post regular reviews, and obviously we're waiting for the next Bronco. I think the Bronco Stealth will be coming soon. Um, we can only imagine that anything that comes from Bronco Motors is going to be absolutely brilliant. Um, <clears throat> just before I go, actually, if I, if I were to offer a comparison, so there are other scooters um, that people are talking about at the minute, like the Nami Bernie. Um, there is a video done by Alien F Free Rides, and, or, or Fluid Free Rides, sorry, I think, um, and, or Alien Rides. It's one of them. Anyway, if you put Bronco 11 Extreme versus Nami versus Jultron, the video will come up. They race the Bronco 11 Extreme against the Nami Bernie and the Jultron, I think Jultron Storm, and the Bronco wins, I think, nearly every race. So this is faster than the Nami Bernie.